Nice. You know, that was a good kiss. Oh, did you did you see this girl again? No. <laughs> but that's but, nice, you know, you know that's uh, just a sort of a... Not for a lack of... Not for lack of love, by the way. Not for lack of love. No, I but, just you know. feel like, you know, it's just this this lovely fleeting experience. Yeah. So, uh, do you want to do another story or poem of your own, Mr. Sheehan? Well... You, you want to get... We're live. Ta -da! Hi. It worked. The technology worked. works. The internet is live. Hello, Good world. Idea. I miss you. I miss you terribly. Yeah. So everyone so, who's watching from my page, let me establish Ari Gold, who is a delightful, bespectacled poet. And in his isolation, he's just been knocking out poems just for the, I think, for the global morale. So much so it's worked that he's, uh, he's encouraged me to write a poem. So today we're both going to read poems, what we wrote over the last few days. Ari, do you want to yeah. do you want to do the honors? Um, OK, so I'll start with a short one that I just did today. Very short. It's called Envy. Mm. Warm rain on the sea makes him feel jealous while a little fish weeps for she has no umbrella. That's it. Did you, did you visualize it? Did, did, I did. You, yeah. I saw a little fish in the umbrella Academy. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even, you know what? I, I wasn't doing it for that reason. <laughs> it was about me. Wasn't it? Ari? I'm the fish. It was about you. Uh, okay, so your turn. Your turn. Okay, so my poem. Are you going to do the one about me, please? Yeah, it's definitely about Ari. And it goes... It goes... <clears throat> Hold me, cold meal of oatmeal, slowly, only if you vow to hold me. Fold me, only if your roll is full spree. Take me. Swirling under downtown, twinkly, all the worldlings. I need to kiss the asphalt with my flesh, funky, fully into jelly my legs be, shaky, shivers fizz up through me until death creeps up behind me and grabs me from upside down, exploiting gravity to past the thresh of my mortality. Let this, to who is asked, to recite a word or three, be my foolish eulogy. Whitney loves you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Whitney. Love you back. <laughs> Good hey, stuff. Everyone, if, uh, if you like a poem daily, check out Ari's page, Ari.gold. Isn't that right, Ari? <laughs> uh, well, no, it's Ari Gold. It's right there. It's just Insta my Instagram is Ari Gold. And by the way, folks, Mr. Robert Sheehan is in my movie, which is called oh, yeah. The Song of Free Lake. Yeah, and you're, if you're sat at home scratching your arses, which I'm yeah, sure you can a few of you send are. me a message and I'll make sure you can watch it because there's some countries where it's not available. But soon we hope many countries. But the many countries of, it is available. The Song of Sway Lake. Check it yes. out. It's a beautiful thing. Yes, and he's, um, he plays a Russian. Robert, Robbie plays a Russian in it. I play a Russian. Yes, it just never left my bones. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he even learned some Russian swear words for it. Yeah. Um, all right, should we do another poem? Yeah, why don't you do one to round it off? Um, okay, comic, romantic, sad. Do you have any special mood requests? I say comic. Let's lift people, folks' spirits. Okay. This one's vaguely comic. Oh, this one I like to do with musical accompaniment. Okay. Mm. This one's called Tortoise and Chicken. What have you got there? I know I have some sort of glockenspiel or it's, something. It's a piano. Um, 
and a and a strange bird bird oh yeah that's uh, that's Ari's spirit animal everyone yeah he's finally come round to accepting that he looks a bit like an owl yeah uh, okay so this one is called tortoise and chicken with musical accompaniment tortoise and chicken they both have weird necks dinosaur hearts scratchy toes bent beaks she is jerky but she is meditative she wakes her up and she assuages her fears they dig in the dirt not at the same spot but side by side tortoise and chicken that was lovely tortoise and chicken ladies and gentlemen all right folks listen just uh you know you go on another one it's your turn by the way or do you want to um, respond why don't you do some response to some of your people i wave back oh, yeah? bravo how do i how do, I do that right you just back? speak to them you just mm-hmm. speak to them I'm they're so they're all writing to you social social media tarded but um this is a good time to learn i suppose you know you look at all those hearts I know. you see those hearts i feel like i'm watching as a, a manga cartoon or something are are you in london right now yeah i'm in london yeah so We're it's LA. What, yes what is it like one in the morning no it's uh, just going 11 now oh okay nice. and the old bojo the boss himself has uh has demanded that all theaters all restaurants all essentially a- arenas of human communication and connection um be closed down as of tomorrow you're welcome yeah yeah california is totally shut down now i mean i'm very fortunate and grateful that i have you know some outdoor space and a piano um yeah. so happy that mm-hmm. I have that and grateful. Well, um you know I don't have great. another um Actually, you know what? I could One of your stories. What about one of your stories? Here's a a, a little thing. It may it's probably not going to be in the book, but uh here's okay. a little story that I wrote about Ireland actually. Okay. It's called Salvador Daily. Thank you. I knew a fella back in Ireland called Salvador Daly. He couldn't paint, but he was a right firebug, a proper little pyromaniac. And we all know Salvador Dali painted a lot of melting clocks, but Salvador Daly's talent was melting actual clocks. If Salvador Daly was round your house, he would melt any clocks he'd find hanging on the walls, but not just wall clocks, mind. Alarm clocks, watches, Anything that told the time he took issue with. He was notoriously unpunctual. It was a bizarre coincidence, really, the two fellas having similar names and such similar dislike for clocks. He did time in a juvenile detention centre for his clock destruction. There wasn't a clock in the whole parish that didn't sustain some fire damage. He'd been banned from the church because he took issue after one service because someone told him the metal thing under, the, under Jesus at the back of the altar was actually a sundial and was used for telling the time before clocks were invented. So he set it ablaze right there in front of the priest and everyone else as they were filing out of Sunday Mass. It turned out his clock destruction stemmed from a lot of repressed angry, uh, anger due to the fact that he was clearly a product of the milkman and not his supposed dad, Fergal. And everyone knew it. Young Salvador was swarthy, a head full of black curls and powerful eyebrows like that of a Spanish sailor. Fergal was peaky looking, even in full health, and had a small head with patches of bristly ginger hair, a bit like Ari. It was, <laughs> it was common knowledge around the parish, of course, and comments were often directed at poor young Salvador. But on the plus side, Salvador always made the starting team in football at school. He could run rings around the other lads, even though he never practiced. A lot of people around town were saying he might be the new Paul McGrath if he'd only concentrate on his training and stop going around melting all those clocks all the time. His anger was specifically directed towards clocks. 
because throughout his life and before he was born, his mother would be up and dressed and looking pristine every morning by 6am, because that was when the dusky milkman was scheduled to arrive. She'd be all smiles and waves and complaining jovially about the close weather or the drizzle. And he was so punctual that people would often say, I tell you, you could set your clock by that half-black milkman. He was ex-military, you see. The myth was that he wound up getting kicked out of the army by way of dishonourable discharge. Ari, can I have a little bit of piano accompaniment? Just a little tinkling in the back. <laughs> of course. I, I think the, the sound is not going to be in perfect sync, but I'll do my best. Just a little, yeah, just a little tinkly. The and myth... If it, if it gets too loud, so I'll, someone tell, tell us. Yeah. If the piano's too loud. The myth was that he wound up getting kicked out of the army by way of dishonorable discharge. Because he'd stolen one of the tanks drunk early one morning and parked it in the Fort Sergeant's parking spot, which was very clearly labeled to be his. And it was known that the corporal's temper was liable to swell to nuclear strike levels if anyone parked in the spot. Just after dawn, he arrived on the base and promptly lost his shit and a few of his epaulets under the, ca under the other cars while having a full-on hissy no. fit. Then he ran the men until they were delirious and sick and resentments grew until an unnamed other muttered the dusky milkman's given name, which is unknown, in the corporal's office. But he didn't resent his company for grasp. It wasn't in his nature, and they were, after all, driven to desperation. Poor little Salvador couldn't face up to what was staring him in the face. So instead, he took it out on every clock he could get his hands on. I suppose in some cases, the apple intentionally tries to fall as far as it possibly can from the tree. Sorry, it was loud was for a second. Apple falling. apple falling. Apple falling. That was the apple falling. That was that. Was, that apple was sour before it hit the ground. Okay. Then again, there was never any talk of seeing the milkman getting high off his own supply. The slurry really hit the fan, you see, when Salvador got a job doing a morning paper round to make a few extra quid. Because it was such a small town, that hour of the morning, he'd always see the dusky milkman making his rounds. They'd lock eyes from across the road, everything being said without any word spoken. Then the pressure would get too much for Salvador, and he'd grab a newspaper, set it on fire, and launch it at the milkman's milk store. Havoc! There were firebombs flying every other morning, cats walking around with patches of hair singed off. But the dusky milkman would never do that. It wasn't in his nature. He'd just dodge the flaming newspapers, kick the embers of it to one side, and drive on. On to the next house. On to the next housewife, pristinely dressed and waiting. People wonder where the black Irish come from. Well, wonder no further. It's the dusky milkmen all around the country of rural Ireland, in every parish, making early morning calls and delivering something other than milk. Man milk! <laughs> That's it? Man milk? Mm -hmm. This is the sound of man milk. Oh, yeah. Woo. Woo. All right. Well, um, God, if you have an old story to tell, do, or an old poem, stick it on social media, because, you know, for all our complaints <laughs> about social media... Spoken like yeah. a real social media expert there. Like, <laughs> put it on the old, you put know, social media. social media. Box, <laughs> because thank God for yeah. it now. Because yeah, well, we need it now. Media. Um, okay, I, I, um, weird so Mr. Sheehan has the entire, uh, while you chew, I'll just say that Mr. Robert Sheehan has an entire book of these fantastic and fantastical short stories, which mm. will be coming to a bookstore near you. In Ireland. When? In Ireland. If you're in Ireland. If you're in Ireland. Uh, um, huh? In Ireland. In at near the at the, near the end of the year, sort of. Okay. October. October so mark your book calendars. Get out your book calendars, and everyone's got a book calendar, right? 
Ari, stop tainting this lovely video with, with PR. Okay. Uh, I, I'm going to read a, a poem for you, Robbie. Go for it, my love. And you can chew your food. Mm -hmm. and, and people can comment about how you chew. Keep, keep talking. I'm just going to fill up my... Oh, a whale. You have a whale on your wall. Do I have a whale poem? Yeah. I don't... That's old Captain Ahab right there. Yeah, okay. I, uh, I already did my sea poem when we started the call. Okay, so this one is called A Kiss. I wrote it in Latvia. Mm. That's a country for those of you who... Don't know geography. Okay. I kissed you in the old cities. You can imagine that I'm saying it to Robbie, right? You, yeah. Robbie, you can imagine I'm saying it to you. Yeah, and he's he kissing kissed you. Me. Yes. I kissed you in the no, old cities. Sorry. That's all. Uh, I kissed you in the old city cemetery, though I knew you were in love with an Italian pilot whose headstone we could not find in the moss and dead leaves. With a second kiss, you stretch over me, your green hair thin and soft, and your knuckles knead my ribs, and still it's not enough. So you find a razor to kiss me again. I can die now as he died a century ago, and I bless you back along the hidden skin under your left breast, slicing the line. The only way to keep warm is to press together like flowers in a book, so my sap enters your tree. You clasp your skin against mine, and we let them wrap us in gauze, which circles the shoulder blades that shoot from your back like fairy ears, white on pink and blue. This cloth binds us tight to heal all our wounds, to keep us safe from cold wind and distraction. Your chin rests in my collarbone, the tip of my nose in your warm ear. Soft thunder pulses between each of our ribs as mud and leaves are wrapped into us too making us a starter pack of seeds. We know that at long last we have permission to be still. Spun tightly, our bodies soften. Hot and cool threads of mycelium, pink and lavender, tickle through our bones, our muscles, the inside of our eyes. And after we have climbed a papyrus stem with our six legs, they push from our hard skin, the netted glitter wings of a single dragonfly that wait for our new body to turn solid, solid enough anyway to flit electric above the soft pond in summer. That was pretty decent, Ari. I like the bit where your sap was going in her tree. Yeah, dirty animal, yeah. <laughs> nice. You know, that was Look. a good kiss. Oh, did you, did you see this girl again? No. <laughs> But that's but, nice, yeah. you know. That's uh, just a sort of a not for lack of not for lack of love, by the way, not for lack of love. Mm. No, I but, just you know. Mean, like you know, it's just this this lovely fleeting experience. Yeah. So, uh, do you want to do another story or poem of your own, Mister Sheehan? Well, you. You want to get back to writing? Yeah, well, I kind of have to. Uh, I'm going to edit deep into the night, man. Deep. I've got maybe deep three, four hours night. of editing left in me. I'm, I'm fired up. I'm ready. Hello, everyone. Sorry, you're, there's loads of messages coming through there across Ari's mug. Yeah, and, um, uh, he's got know, the munchies. Say hello to all is. I'm going to follow you for a poem. Oh yeah, now nice one. Some <laughs> people are, people are on your map. Your uh, your mad poem vibe, Ari. People are going to be following you. Which platform? You think is so? That? It's on his page, Ari Gold. Yeah, yes, Ari Gold is my oh. page, and Robbie is in my in our movie. Come on, it's, we're allowed to say that. Oh. You I'm acted in my Ecuador. movie. We're allowed to say that. Oh, Ecuador. Hola, Ecuador. Hola, Ecuador. Hola, qué tal? Qué tal en Ecuador ahora? Peace es difícil en todo el mundo, no? Give us the Russian swear words. Okay, you ready? Not we push the parasi blat. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I wonder there if I go. can share a photo of you. No, I don't know how to do that. Anyway, yes. Um, well, loves. There's a link to there's a link to the movie, but uh, one more, one more poem, 
Or are you more doing short stories now? Any well, poems? Any more poems for us? I wonder, do I have Ciao. Another? Actually, you know what? Let me, uh, let me recite that lovely poem that I know well. off the top of my head. Or actually, actually, I just, do you know, as a, as a memory uh, exercise, I, I, I've been learning off pieces of, of things. Actually, that's another thing. I learned this lovely uh, Oscar Wilde poem recently called Requiescat. So I'll recite that for you now, right? Okay. Requiescat by Oscar Wilde. Tread softly, she is near under the snow. Speak gently, she can hear the daisies grow. All her bright golden hair, tarnished with rust, she that was young and fair, fallen to dust. Lily-like, white as snow, she never knew she was a woman, so sweetly she grew. Coffin board, hard stone, lay on her breast. I vex my heart alone, she is at rest. Peace, peace, she cannot hear lyre or sonnet. All my life's buried here, heap earth upon it. Oscar Wilde knew what he was doing. Cheers, Oscar. We got a request for um, trans rights. Can you just say trans rights? Trans rights. Woo. There you go. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeats. We were talking about Yeats the other day. Oh, yeah. My, my favorite poem is a Yeats poem. Others, because you did not keep that deep sworn vow, have been friends of mine. Oh, that's oh, nice. Shit. What is the rest of the poem? Yet, always when I... When I... I'm forgetting what the middle line... I am a night owl. Yes, I am. Definitely. And I don't play Animal Crossing. You know what that is? It sounds, uh, it sounds vaguely bestial. Here we go. Others, because you did not keep that deep sworn vow, have been friends of mine. Yet always when I look death in the face, when I clamber to the heights of sleep, or when I grow excited with wine, suddenly I meet your face. So f fucking good. And short. I know Was he... Yeats was Irish too, right? Mm hmm You 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 people from Ireland have such a way with words, it's really really something. I know. We have to keep that a, a tradition alive and well. I think nothing like corona lockdown to kind of to expand one's lyrical vocabulary. Can you tell us the plot of one of your other stories in your book? Just a little a little tease? Well, one actually, for those of you who are in America, one of them is, it's about a truck driver who used to be in the military. And he, um, he, he you know, I suppose because he was, he didn't know what to do with his life, he moved out to uh, Williston, North Dakota. And uh, because there was a big economic oil boom going on, lots of oil fracking, lots of infrastructure being built, lots of work. And uh, he, he doesn't find this environment too pleasing at all. He's, he's very unhappy. He's very physically unhappy, emotionally unhappy. And then he has this really profound experience, which sort of lifts him out of all that. Um via a vending machine. And that's all I'm going to tell you. You're not going to tell us who's in the machine? No, no, I, the, the, the thing, that, the, that's the whole, that's the whole juice of the story, Ari. Yeah, okay. But that's the one that I've been, uh, been just finishing up editing tonight. Okay. But it's good. What's the it's book good. called? Do we, do, do we know the name of the book yet? No, I haven't sort of settled on a title yet. There was a couple of, I don't know if you found this, Ari, but you know the way you kind of, 
you take a title on board and then it pings around in a few emails, you know, and maybe pings back to you from the world and you go... Oh, and you're like, what the fuck was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's been a few where I've gone, oh, yeah, and then it's kind of soured. And then there's been a few... Uh, do, you, do you remember the, the biography I was going to write for you? Title? Oh, go on, t tell the world. What was it going to be called then? <laughs> from Green Isle to Green Screen, the Robert Sheehan story. <laughs> And just picture think? me like this on the... From green aisle to green screen. Yeah. On the front. Yeah. <laughs> just a floating head in front, in front of a green yeah. screen. Can... Oh, my God. I just see a bunch of hearts. Um, so, okay. Well... This is fun. Hi to friend Matt. Hi, hi to ass cheek gang as well. Um, the entire... These are... These do you know that Robert Sheehan, do you remember you sat on my face when you were shoot, we were shooting my movie, speaking yeah. of Ask You? You sat on a lot of people's face. faces. And I, when, um, so we shooting have all night. pictorial evidence of that, don't we? We do have pictorial evidence of that, which is under, you know, it's CIA is keeping <laughs> guard on it. Nah, I have a copy. No. Oh, you do? You can publish it if you want to. <laughs> it's all in good fun. There's one of them is the one of the ones where you're sitting on someone is is like the beautiful dawn on the lake. Um, oh really? You know, I don't of, think I've seen that picture. Who am I sitting on? Uh, Anne Bernstein, oh, and yeah. one other person. Was that? that it was after we had shot and... like all night long, and the dawn came up, and everyone was totally delirious, and and the crew was all lying in different rooms, and you were walking around sitting on everybody oh. on their faces. Yeah. Oh. Those were. I miss that the was the day. Spring. Yeah, you know, you've, you'd more freedom just to wander around sitting on folks. Yeah. But that was a very special experience we had. We were up in the Adirondack Mountains on a beautiful lake called Blue Mountain Lake. Yes. And we shot the movie in and around this extraordinarily stunning setting. And we yeah. were up there for how long, Ari? Like four or five weeks filming? Uh, you were there for 18 or 20 days. 18 days, I think. We Is shot the eight, film in 18 days. Yeah. We, and well, we shot in, I think, 20, 23 days. And you, you left five days early because uh, you had to shoot another movie. As you said, you, you referred to our movie as your practice movie. Yes, I had to go. But you have trophies. You have trophies from our movie. So, you know, you maybe got that. paid more with the other our, one. But our film is. Um is the only thing I've ever won any acting prizes for. I think I mailed you, I mailed you a couple of them, right? Let's see. Yeah, yeah. These. Yeah, I got one. One that traveled to, ooh, what does that say? Best? That's Best Narrative Narrative Feature. Feature. There is, oh, Shit. They're kind of littered around my bookshelf here, but I think I mailed you the one that looks like a, that looks a like big, a. A big sort of lamp, yeah. That was funny because that one went from Kew Gardens in, in Southwest London Film Festival to you in, to in East Los Angeles, back to me in in South at the time Southwest London. Is any anywhere near Kew Gardens in London? I don't know London. Sorry, because that yeah, would be. I was I okay. was living down the road from where that film festival took place, and then they posted you the award. Um. Yes, it's... we can be friends, Ditter for Hooker. Yes. Um, okay, well. Well, darlings. We could sign off that. unless Robert is hustling. Um. Yeah. I'm eating, I'm eating a lovely sweet potato sort of stew that I... There's made. a lot of Misfits fans here, by the way. You well, have a lot of Misfits loyalists. Yeah, well, good. My yeah. loyal army. You'll know yeah. what to do when the time is right. But you check this out. Sway Lake. We're getting shout-outs for Sway Lake. I'm uh, eating this sweet potato stew, right? Sweet potato, coconut milk, chili, um, broccoli, broccoli, kidney beans, bit of garlic. Oh, it's glorious. Bit of rice. See? Excuse me. We'll see how long um. I am. Um, Ari Gold, do you ever last, have I ever seen Entourage? Those. Yeah, go to arigold.net, and that's my response to Entourage. Yes, they stole my name. It's true. It is true. I played in a band with a guy who was 
the star of the show and his managers took my name without permission, by the way. But anyway, yes, uh, uh, arigold.net. I made a video that Robbie is briefly in for about 0.5 seconds, uh, which was my attempt to say fuck you back to Entourage. Um, not dot com. Net. And uh, yeah, you're not at all litigious, I notice, Ari. No, everyone was like, you should sue them. <laughs> but I didn't sue them. Good. It's not good yeah. for your soul to be suing people. Yeah, it's not good for your soul. But, um, um, okay. It's not, or is someone's at, uh, earlier, someone, a lot of Misfits fans still, someone hmm. said, tell that guy how to read the thing so people want you to read more but they're moving pretty quickly it's hard it's hard for this irish man who's writing all day to be also reading yeah i've got nothing left to read to uh oh. that's not true you got plenty more you, we, you know we could do this regularly we could do this as a weekly thing because you have lots of stories huh Ooh, actually i have two lovely poetry books why don't we why don't we trail it, Ari? That's a good idea. Why don't next week we do another one of these? And I have these two beautiful poetry books. One's called Being Alive and the other one's called Staying Alive. And they're absolute like you just open them at random and find the most magical poems. Every time I open the book I find a new poem. Okay. Who wrote so, is it a uh, collection or Yeah, it's a big mad collection, all different okay. poems. Okay. I'm game. Yeah. Someone's written, I'm so high right now. Well, I'm not far <laughs> behind you. No, yeah, okay. Um, it's it's, right. uh, it's the plan. Right, go on, ye pups. Nice go, to see uh, you. You too, my love. Great to see you. And I miss that alpine cabin of a house. You better leave it to me in your will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'll just put the uh, I'll put the virus in the, in this little tank here in the corner. So, right. so it won't localize it to that tank. There, there. Um, okay, hope to see you soon. Um, maybe in person somehow. Much so love to everybody happy. and uh, stay strong. Oh, and much love to all your families and friends as well. Indeed. Okay. God bless. Bye. Stay classy, Sandy. And remember, save it. Remember to save it for people. Oh, yeah. So end save.